Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian back here again. I'm working on our anode ray and cathode ray projects and I want to build a vacuum pump that could actually actuate off of the Wimshurst Why I'm turning the handle of the Wimshurst. Uh, so this is what I've come up with. I kind of got to pre-build everything, make sure it's going to work before I can show you. So it's a little more difficult building it right on hand for you. So I'll do my best here trying to describe the building process. First of all, you want to start with just an outer tube here. This is our case tube. This will actually be a uh, the cylinder housing. And you want to make sure it's a seamless piece of tubing in there. You don't want any seams going down that. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth because that will ruin the effect of your pump head there. Um, the pump head is basically a wooden circle, uh, the inside wooden circle there of a hole saw. So basically I pull uh, the inner little chunk there out of my hole saw and that's this back brown part that you see right there at the tip of my finger. Uh, the front gray pieces here are actually cut out pieces of leather from two sources. One is an old glove that I actually cut some leather out of so I got three pieces of this really thin leather from the palm of an old glove. And then I've got two pieces of leather from a really thick old belt. This is nice, tough, thick leather. Once you cut that right, it makes a great seal inside of there. Uh, the old Benjamin Daisy or Benjamin uh, Sheridan air rifles used to basically use that leather piston head as their pump seal also, so it does work very, very well. And you'll notice here when this goes inside, it's a very tight fit. And you gotta put, you can't see how much I'm straining to push that in there. But it's got actually a lot of pressure going down, so it makes a great seal inside of that tube. So you basically just need a housing, uh, a rod, and a pump head here. And you can use leather or rubber or whatever you've got for your seal head. Uh, for a couple of the one-way valves, on the pump housing itself, a very simple one-way valve right here. And I'll try to get this up close to the camera. Is underneath this leather flap that's just glued onto the metal is a drilled hole. And you can probably see that hole right there. You can see all my lines still marked on here. This would actually be the bottom edge of the piston when it's on the very bottom edge of its downstroke. So it leaves a little bit of gap between it there. So that flap will actually open up, release pressure on the downstroke, on our pressure stroke, close back up on our upstroke, and allow for the vacuum stroke to work. And now what I've got for an internal one-way valve is this right here. And it's just a rubber grommet. I'll take it apart here in a second and show you it. But I've got a, a nut on one side, a little spring inside of there. There's a couple leather seals and a washer and a nut there. And all it does is on the spring, if I can get the angle just right, when you, you can see the spring helps it actuate, open up there, and then it closes right back down. That's what the spring allows it to do. It's a very weak spring out of the head of a uh, retractable pen uh, writing utensil. So that actually works really good for a one-way valve that will actually go right inside of here. So we've got our opening side of the valve there. So it opens the seal towards the inside. We're going to set that right, get the angle here, set that right down inside of that tube. And I'm, I've got a pretty good measurement of how far it goes in there with just my finger right there. So we've actually got a one-way valve, which would be impossible for that camera to pick up. You can kind of see the screw in there. We've got a one-way valve now installed inside of the tube about right here right below our, our hole here, our exhaust hole. It's just sitting right there. I want to glue that into place here in a minute, but I want to show you all this before I seal it off. Uh, the next step of this is this little piece right here, and it's basically another one of those hole saw plugs. And what I have is a little piece of stainless steel tubing sticking out of it there. That's going to give us our vacuum hose hookup right there. That'll actually be the hookup for our vacuum hose. And this little piece here slides in behind that last piece we put in, right to about there. And what that'll do, I don't know if you can see that in there, it'll leave us the uh, port to put our, our hosing on. It also leaves an air gap between that plug I just put in and the one-way valve at the bottom. There's a bit of an air gap right there. It allows the spring inside of there and the bolt to move fully. Uh, that's pretty key necessary there to make sure that can fully actuate inside of there. So a little bit of an air gap, then that plug, and then we got our output there for our vacuum hose. Uh, the next steps here, obviously, are going to be able to mount this thing uh, to a flywheel off of our Wimshurst. And all I've done to do that is basically installed a bolt through the back end of the pipe on our piston rod here. Uh, that pipe is basically just going to be the rod arm pushing up and down on there. Uh, this will go into the flywheel, this bolt right here. And I've got a bunch of little pieces here that it were actually needed to make this work. One of them is this little grommet here. It has threads in it. It has a... Uh, a flange side and a thin down side here. And that'll actually thread on 
just like that. And so that'll actually mount through the flywheel with a couple grommet washers right there to keep it compressed. And that'll give us a really nice rotation on that and allow it to spin. So real quick, let me set this up. Uh, I'll hook it all up onto the Wimshurst machine here and I'll show you exactly how, what it looks like when it's in motion. All right, folks, so now we're going to go ahead and install uh, the pump head itself on a flywheel that you can see right here. I'll show this a little bit more detail. I'll back off here in a minute once I hook it all together for you. But what this is is basically a, a, a three inch pulley. We've got a belt going down to a 10 inch pulley down here off of the main drive rod from our Wimhurst. It's also driving our Wimhurst wheels. Uh, so off of this three inch pulley up here, you can see I just mounted a simple uh, mount bracket off of that and drilled a hole in it. And that's actually going to hold our pump head here. So let me go ahead and install that real quickly. First part I've got is that flange piece that I showed you. That'll actually go in through the back side of that and stick out just like that. Uh, the next piece, I've got this little wooden grommet as a uh, spacer filler here. That goes on there just like that. And the next step here is to go ahead and take our pump head and start twisting it on there. So give me just a second to wind that on. All right, so there we go. That's on there now, that's ready to go. You can see we've got our pump head mounted. Real quickly here, let me go ahead over on the other side. And we'll mount the actual, uh, the housing here. So you can see the screw I'm about to undo right here at the tip of my fingers. I'll show you that bracket at a different angle here so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, at the end of our, our piece here, remember we had the two holes on the very end. So what we're gonna do, we're going to go ahead and line that up over here. Go ahead and stick our bolt pin back through. Put the nut back on it here. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry folks, should probably do this at a better thing. So first what we're going to do is stick the piston head inside the housing here. And then we're going to put our bolt through. Had that a little backwards there for a moment. So once I get this tight, we are basically ready to go. All right, so here we go. You can watch how that mechanism now works. It's a little loud. There you go, folks. That's how our vacuum pump is going to actually actuate here and create a vacuum inside of our uh, cathode ray and our anode ray tube. All right, folks, so we're looking at the three inch pulley right now. You can see I've just taken a flanging or a construction bracket here. You can see some of our rivets right at the tips of my fingers there. If I turn that back a little bit, you can see the other rivets there. That's just riveted on. I drilled and riveted. Uh, that's just holding our pump in line right there. This is a lot easier to have your housing pivot like this than it is to actually build all the linkage that comes off of this. All those linkage pieces are weak unless they're made out of very strong pieces of steel. You get bends in them and all the rest. I actually tried it a couple times here. Uh, the first mount was actually off of the lower 10 inch wheel there. You see a hole in that plate I've uh, riveted on there. I tried that but the rotation was far too slow to give us any kind of real vacuum pressure while we were using this. And even this is a little slower than I'd like it to be. I'd like that actually rotating at a lot higher speed. So I may redo this and put this down to like a 1 and 5 eighths inch pulley here. Uh, maybe increase the outside on this one here to a 14 instead of a 10. So we'll do some stuff there. Here in the background you should be able to see if I zoom in here. You see our bracket. It's another construction bracket with two flanges on either side. Just allows that to hold on there. Pretty simple to do. Uh, nothing too uh, spectacular here, folks. Just an easy way to actuate a vacuum pump while we're running our Wimshurst electrostatic generator. All right, folks. So we're going to test our vacuum pump real quick here. I have this little uh, one liter pop bottle. I've got a plug here or a tube going into the lid. I've got that tube running across. I have some zip ties holding it there. Uh, that comes up here. Drops down right there. And goes into the top of our output for our vacuum pump right there. So you should be able to see 
Uh, some form of vacuum happening as I turn the Wimhurst here, so I'm going to set up the camera so you can see this happening. We should be able to suck that bottle all the way down flat, so let me set it up. Alright folks, so here we go. Let's turn the Wimhurst and see if we can create a pretty good vacuum from that vacuum pump. It should take a second before we see the reaction starting. And all of a sudden we should see the bottle starting to, uh, there we go. I can't tell just how far that thing's punched down. Sounds like we've either reached the max of the bottle. Oh, that thing's nice and flat. So there you go. That's how to make a vacuum pump. You can actually watch the bottle now start to regain some of the pressure back in it. So that's going to work really well for our cathode and our anode ray projects not including a bunch of other projects that we can now use this vacuum pump on. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, this is Mr. Tesalonian.